vampires, werewolves, and zombies. Oh my. Sometimes you gotta howl at the moon, sink our teeth into something, and go after some brains. Let's talk vampires, werewolves, and zombies. What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to Backtrack Cinema. My name is Jason, and welcome to this episode of 31 Days of Horror, which we are going to talk vampires, werewolves, and zombie genre. I thought it would be really cool playing into the Little Wizard of Oz, Lions, Tigers, and Bears, oh my, if you got that little joke. Of course, all of you did. You're awesome film fans. These are three genres that are not really in competition with each other. But kind of, you know, there's the zombie fans, there's the werewolf fans, there's the vampire fans. It's what you like more. So I'm just going to go through, a, you know, it's not a typical, it's not really a ranking, guys. Just going to go through my collection that I pulled out all of my werewolf movies, my zombie movies, my uh, vampire movies. And we're just going to go and just have a chill conversation about these flicks. Let Me In is great. It's one of those really good remakes. I know a lot of people are big fans of Let the Right One In. They do do things a little different with this one, but I really liked it. I love Matt Reeves. He went on to do the Planet of the Apes movies and stuff like that. So you definitely got to check Let Me In out. Fright Night is my favorite vampire flick. Um, I'm not going to go into too much detail about it. It's a great horror comedy of the 80s because I will be talking about this um, movie on its own episode. But love Jerry the Vampire. He has got so much charisma. He's so seductive. And I just like how this movie plays into something like Rear Window, where this neighbor moves in and Charlie's spying on his neighbor, thinks he's a vampire. And it has a lot of that tension to it. But it's one of this, the great 80s horror comedies. We got the Fright Night remake. I thought this was okay. It's not as bad as a lot of people say it is. But it's certainly not the original. But I think Colin Farrell does a pretty good job in this one. You can't go wrong with the original Dracula or any original Universal Monster movie. I mean, Dracula is supposed to be the vampire, the most powerful vampire, the most seductive vampire. Bella Lugosi. I mean, do we have to say anything more? Dracula is a classic. You should all check this one out. If you haven't checked out these old black and white Universal Monster movies, they're classics, man. John Carpenter's Vampires wouldn't make my top 10 or anything. But I do enjoy this movie. I think James Woods is an awesome, badass character in this. I like the opening to this film where they're they're pulling all of them out of their nest, all the vampires into the sunlight, and that's how they kill them. Like They're just a badass team of vampire hunters, and you're not messing with James Woods in this movie, man. He's He is awesome. has some of the greatest one-liners in this. Like, hey, Padre, did you get some wood out of that? Huh? Just a little? <laughs> Near Dark. Now, Near Dark is the one that went under the radar, directed by Catherine Bigelow. Basically, a lot of the cast from Aliens, you know, did this one. We got a great performance by Bill Paxton. We got Lance Hendrickson in here. The girl who plays Van Vasquez is in here. Is in here. But, you know, with Lost Boys was the big vampire of 87. So this one went under the radar. But Near Dark is awesome. It's Twilight before Twilight. Western kind of romance, love story with a human and a vampire, but done in a really awesome way. Executed well, not that Twilight bullshit. 30 Days of Night's awesome. I love the winter setting, and I love how these vampires are vicious. And I love the concept, you know, 30 Days of Night in Alaska, where they're going to have no sunlight for 30 days. It will stay dark for 30 days straight. And seeing them hide, seeing them trying to survive this situation, I think is awesome. 30 Days of Night is... uh. A really awesome movie, I think. A cool concept. We got The Lost Boys. What more has to be said? This is an awesome, entertaining ride, man. With Keith Sutherland as one of the best, glamorous, badass vampires ever. There's a little twist at the end of this movie that always worked for me. My boy on the sax just... You know what I mean? It's just awesome, the freaking Lost Boys. Ram Stoker's Dracula. This is pretty good not one i watch all the time uh, awesome gary oldman performance dracula going back to that love story of dracula i just think keanu reeves and winona Ryder are not very good in this movie i mean that's i think keanu reeves is one of the most improved actors there is man 
And Winona Ryder, you know, she's good in some things, but it's, she's good in Winona Ryder's good in a lot of things, but I just didn't think she was very good in this. But the music, the costume design, the production design was is absolutely awesome. It is still an awesome movie. It's just some of the acting falls for me. All right, moving on to werewolves. We got the steelbook here of the howling. I really love this steelbook. You know what I mean? This is such a unique, unique take on the werewolf genre. It follows this journalist and Dee Wallace who's been attacked or is being threatened by this serial killer who ends up being eddie this werewolf they bring her to this colony ends up being a colony of werewolves and shit goes down fast i love rob botin's work on the werewolves here i think they look gnarly man i think they look awesome they definitely dog soldiers i think took inspiration from these style of werewolves um for sure but I love D. Wallace in this. Some of the practical effects with D. Wallace at the end of the movie is not great, but that end scene where she shows the world that werewolves exist is awesome, where she's changing and she just screams into the air. She is an awesome scream queen. But this is very unique, this movie. It's not your typical werewolf movie, and I think that's why I love it so much. Speaking of dog soldiers, Neil Marshall's dog soldiers, this was such a pleasant surprise. I mean, right on here, it says Jaws, Aliens, and Predator with a werewolf twist. Tell me that's not me. I mean, there's some serious aliens vibes in this. A bunch of these this military Scottish soldiers, they retreat to this house and all these werewolves they're being attacked by. Um, Night of the Living Dead vibe where they, you know, they're stuck in this place trying to survive the night. And man, dog soldiers is so fun. There's one line in this movie where the werewolf is killing one of the soldiers. And he's just like, I hope I give you the fucking shits. <laughs> so, yeah, check out Dog Soldiers if you haven't seen it. We got the remake to The Wolfman. Now, I gave this a recent watch. It's not as bad as I remember it. But what really holds the movie back is the script. There had to be a lot more like all the wolf and out stuff is good. All the wolf stuff is good when wolf and out and all that kind of stuff is what the characters are doing in between all that. I do like Anthony Hopkins and I do love Emily Blunt. I think Emily Blunt is, she's one of my favorite actresses and she's definitely, I think the best part of this movie, her and Anthony Hopkins, but I love Benicio del Toro. Don't get me wrong. I do think he's playing the character pretty good. They just didn't give him enough to do through it. They needed a stronger script and tighten things up a lot. But other than that, man, you know, I'm, I don't got a problem with this movie. Like three and a half out of five, I would say. I mean, Rick Baker worked on the effects. It's just all the wolf stuff's great. The atmosphere is great. The production design is great, but needed work with the script. We got the classic American werewolf in London. What's more to be said? This movie terrified me when I was a kid. That that one part where she opens the window and the soldier breaks in. That terrified me. Didn't see that coming. There's that one horrific image of this character in the dream sequence. That image just terrified me as a kid, believe it or not. It's one of those movies that scared me as a kid. and I never went back to it to a few years ago, really. And some of the comedy doesn't always work for me, but a lot of it does. I do really do like this movie. It, the best werewolf change. I think we would all agree on that but american werewolf london is a fun time we got my favorite here silver bullet this is the scream shout factory release here i actually love this cover you guys can check that out like that it is awesome it's better than the original vhs cover but silver bullet is so fun and yeah it doesn't have the best werewolf but the way they hide the werewolf really adds to the film's atmosphere um, I love the kills. I love the sense of dread with the town, how the town's scared that all of the, you know, people are dying and everyone's this, you know, staying indoors and all that. Megan Follows did a great job in this movie as Gene. Marty's awesome. The relationship he has with Uncle Red. One of my favorite kills is the, the girl who's going to commit suicide. The wolf comes up to the window. That terrified me as a kid where he's just freaking clawing at her skin and she's lying on the bed at the end. But yeah, Silver Bullet's just got this real 80s charm that's really timeless. You know, it really is timeless. Red Riding Hood, I do remember liking. I like Amanda Seyfried and, you know, playing on that tale of Red Riding Hood. And it's one of those movies that is forgotten. Um, I do suggest you give it a watch. There are some good things in it, but 
I mean, it's not like oh, it's not great, but it's not bad. It's in the middle. You know what I mean? One of those three, three and a half out of five kind of films. I pulled out Cursed. I still have not seen this movie, so I got to give this one a watch. This was, I believe, directed by yeah, Wes Craven, Christine Ricci, Joshua Jackson, and Shannon Elizabeth. So I got to check this one out. I pulled it out anyway just to show you guys. Cursed. Late Phases, Night of the Lone Wolf. This is a really one that just went completely under the radar. But I picked it up on Blu-ray. I enjoyed this one. And it centers around this blind war veteran at this retirement home. And when this wolf kills his seeing eye dog, he takes a personal vendetta against this wolf. So I would check this one out. You know what I mean? I've always had a good time with it. So I want to show you guys a series called Bitten. This is a Canadian production. And it's actually coming to Netflix this October. Very soon, actually, at the time of this recording, anyway. It only had three seasons. Um, Bitten is, you know, there's an animal in all of us. This stars the girl from Smallville, Laura Vandervaught. And uh, she's quite good in it. And it's basically, there are no female werewolves. She's the only female werewolf, right? And so this, she's very unique in the werewolf lore in this. They're all male. And... The werewolf pact or all the wolves is is kind of organized, like almost like organized crime. And she has left her pack. She left her pack a long time ago with this family and everything like that. When a dead girl is discovered in the woods, this threatens the pack and an all out war could start. So, I mean, this I'm going vaguely by what's I'm just going by on the back of the box. I, I watched this one years ago. It's like 2016, somewhere around there. But um, this is I bought the DVD, I think it is. So three seasons, guys, bitten. I just wanted to give this one a little shout out. All right, let's talk some zombies now, guys. We got Return of the Living Dead. I mean, my favorite zombie film, the punk rock vibe, you know, the cemetery vibe, you know, where they're all at the grave and stuff. You put graveyards in a horror film. I just love it. Mix it with some zombies, zombies running, going after brains. I love the dynamic between all the characters. Just great stuff. This interesting one, zombie film, Maggie with Arnold Schwarzenegger. Arnold Schwarzenegger is very good in this. This is a very grounded movie about this virus. And when his daughter is slowly turning into a zombie, we see what Arnold's going through as a father. And it's a character study, really. And I really love this one. Abigail Breslin and Arnold Schwarzenegger in this. And Arnold really surprised me in this. I thought he really went for, he really tried to pull out a really good performance in this. So I've always appreciated this one. It's a very slow burn though. Just keep that in mind. 28 weeks later. I like both of them. 28 days later. 28 weeks later is my favorite one though. And then we got 28 years later, I think it's coming up, which will be fantastic. But the opening to this film is absolutely anxiety induced terror, man. Uh, with the shaky cam going on, just adding to that effect, just awesome. This is a tension-filled ride, man. I absolutely love 28 Weeks Later. The original Night of the Living Dead. It's just awesome. Out of those, out of Day of the Dead, Dawn of the Dead, Night of the Living Dead, I've always loved Night of the Living Dead the most. The old Black and War horror vibe is awesome. Something very, no one did anything like this at this time. George A. Romero just, you know, Crafting a really, really awesome drive-in style movie here, right? Barbara, you know, she's kind of weak. She's overplayed and all that kind of stuff, but still classic, man. And, you know, I love our main lead. And I think his name is Ben. I think his name is Ben. And just the way he the way he gets killed at the end, it's just like, oh, my God. Just because something looks like the way it does doesn't mean it is. You know what I mean? Making these judgments obviously playing into the racial tensions at the time and all that kind of stuff, but using the zombies, you know what I mean? Oh, it looks like a zombie. Let's blast it. <laughs> Not knowing what it is, who that is, you know, that they actually just killed a person and they didn't give a fuck. Oh man. Night of the living dead is awesome. Zombie land. Zombie land is a ton of fun. This is funny as hell. This movie. I absolutely enjoyed this movie. I've only seen it once though. But Woody Harrelson, he was kick-ass. I love the comedy. The comedy all worked for me. So this is, you definitely got to check out Zombieland if you haven't seen it. And Day of the Dead. Absolutely love the Blu-ray here, Day of the Dead. Not my favorite out of the three, but I do love that one kill. You know, he's being ripped. His guts are being shredded and everything at the end. And Bud is a classic zombie for sure. I do like this more than Dawn of the Dead, to be honest with you, of... Uh, 
I haven't been the biggest fan of Dawn. I actually like Zack Snyder's remake better than the original. I guess, I, I guess the, but I've only seen the original a couple times. And I can't really use the excuse that it's slow and everything because I love slow burns. I love slow movies. But a lot of the characters didn't do much for me in that original uh, Dawn of the Dead. But honestly, I do need to rewatch it. Now, there's two more I'd like to talk about that I don't have physical copies of. And that is Trained Abuse. <laughs> love that movie it is absolutely terrifying it's the tension in train to Busan with zombies you know come to life on this train and everything it, it's not isolated this one this one is um claustrophobic because you're on this train and all that kind of stuff and when they're at the train station things just get out of hand fast in this movie and the tension just rises and rises and there's a lot of emotional father's daughter stuff you can relate to and another one is army of the dead Zack snyder's army of the dead i really enjoyed this one really big blockbuster kind of entertainment but i love how Zack snyder does something a little different with a king and a queen kind of thing there's a king zombie a queen zombie and everything like that i love the way he handles all that and it's kind of like a heist movie they got to break into this area where there's these zombies and stuff like that and I always, I had a good time with that one. That one was absolutely pretty fantastic. So that is it, guys. That is this, you know, us shooting the shit, talking about vampires, werewolves, and zombies. So let me know in the comments what your favorites are of favorite vampire movies, favorite werewolf movies, favorite zombie movies, and which genre is your favorite out of those three. And we'll have a great discussion in the comments. Don't forget to slap a like on this video. Subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out if you love this video. So that's going to do it for me, guys. My name is Jason. You're watching Backtrack Cinema. I got an end card right below there for you guys to hit and go down the rabbit hole and watch more videos. I'll see you next time, and I'll see you in the movies. Cheers.